Hello and welcome to our roundup of the week's events at the European Parliament in Strasbourg. Amid budget and deficit battles, the Parliament examined longer-term ways for Europe to grow itself out of crisis. It also focused on how to protect children from sexual abuse, which is our first report. The MEPs debated how to combat sexual exploitation of children and child pornography. The Parliament was expressing its opinion on a proposed EU directive that would establish minimum rules to define criminal offences and sanctions. It also aims to strengthen crime prevention and protection of the victims. Roberta Angelilli of the EPP group wrote the report. She was joined by Home Affairs Commissioner Cecilia Malmström. It's the first directive specifically against exploitation of minors, the violence and abuses on the web. The objective is to have clear, severe and uniform penalties in all 27 member states. The directive would fight sex tourism at home and abroad, which victimizes 2 million children every year, according to UN estimates. We have a specific article against sex tourism, because there are EU citizens who can be prosecuted even if their abuse of minors is in territory outside the EU. The directive would also give investigators some sharp tools, allowing them to intercept communications, conduct electronic surveillance and monitor bank accounts. In this directive, we aim very much at prevention on awareness campaigns, but also on immediate removal of harmful online content. And if it isn't possible to immediately to eliminate online sites, member states can block them to prevent the transmission of abusive, violent images on the web. Sharp tools to fight unemployment are what MEPs and three European commissioners debated on Tuesday. It was a question and answer session on the 12 priorities of the single market and what action to take beyond. MEPs grilled the commissioners on the measures aimed at freeing up the potential of Europe's economy to create the jobs and growth desperately needed to pull the EU out of crisis. Among the 12 priorities, easing access to finance for small and medium-sized enterprises or SMEs, enhancing worker mobility in the single market with respect to language and qualifications, improving transport, energy and communications networks, striving towards a digital single market for payments and IDs cutting regulatory red tape and making it easier for SMEs across Europe to bid for public procurement contracts. Michel Barnier is Internal Market Commissioner and a member of the EPP family. There isn't any more public money to distribute to promote growth, or not much of it. So we have to do otherwise, because we have a duty to bring growth. And that's what our citizens are expecting of us. They don't just expect regulation, austerity, supervision, governance. And that's the objective of the Single Market Act. Health and Consumer Affairs Commissioner John Daly, also a member of the EPP family, says the consumer also plays an important role. Economic growth comes from the new innovative technologies that we have to roll out in the market. But there can be no economic growth if there is no consumer confidence in the market. Whatever products we roll out in the market has to be accepted by the consumer who has to feel comfortable in the market to participate. And that is why the total partnership of the consumer in the market is one of the important elements for economic growth. Jobs are the way out of the crisis, and the Parliament focused on two measures we highlighted in earlier reports. First, on how to adapt to changing markets and technological advances. The other, on how to help a vulnerable and growing part of the labor force, the disabled. MEPs headed by the EPP group's Regina Bastos of Portugal voted on amendments to a European Commission proposal titled The Agenda for New Skill and Jobs. The proposal aims to make Europe's workforce more flexible and responsive to a changing labor market. That includes developing new skills through lifelong learning, especially important considering Europe's aging population. 
Eu estou muito satisfeita com a proposta. I'm very satisfied with the proposal of the European Commission. I think that the proposal succeeds in identifying and highlighting the two major challenges that we have in the future in the labour market, and those challenges are the creation of jobs and the adaptation of skills and professional qualifications for the labour market. Fighting long-term unemployment is also a priority in the proposal. The other measure was spearheaded by Adam Kosa of Hungary, an EPP group member and the first deaf MEP. He wants a change of approach to see Europe's 80 million disabled as an opportunity to boost Europe's growth potential. The disabled make up 16 percent of Europe's workforce and that percentage stands to increase as Europe's population ages. COSA's report calls for barrier-free accessibility to services and workplaces, special communication techniques for the deaf and hard of hearing, and it proposes a new inclusive education system. Despite an era of austerity, COSA says those actions would be a wise, sustainable investment. 300,000 people are without jobs in Hungary. However, if they were in the labour market, those disabled people, the GDP of Hungary would increase by 10%. So I think that is a good way of showing all national governments that sure in the first year it may seem as a large investment, however the returns are many. COSA also proposes putting tougher penalties in existing laws that support the disabled and an ambitious European Accessibility Act next year to ensure that words are put to action. That's all for now on EPP Report. EPP TV will be there to bring the latest news. In the meantime, please check eppgroup.eu for all the activities of the largest political group in Parliament. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to welcoming you to the next Strasbourg session.